Yes. Kevin Hollinray. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak after the Honourable Gentleman for Sefton Centre, and I agree with him that this conversation should be had with the engagement of business to find a solution. And I've tried to do that over the last few years when we've been debating this issue time and time again. Of course, having business, business for a number of years, three decades, the number one thing that any business wants is a fair and level playing field in which to compete. That's not just good for businesses, it's also good for, for consumers. The best thing to drive down prices and drive up service is a healthy, competitive market, free market. So I will draw the House's attention to my registered members' interests. Uh, our business did uh, occupy a couple hundred uh, shops up and down the country. And um, there's no doubt the business rates were built for a completely different era. And we talk about this conversation, we talk about business rates is actually making life difficult for some businesses. And that is true, of course, it's an additional cost you could do without. But the number one thing that's driving problems for businesses are consumer choices. The choice to shop online rather than choice to shop in the high street. Um, but nevertheless, to give the high street a chance, and I think everyone in this chamber wants to make, the high, make sure the high street, street stays lively and it, of course it will change, its makeup will change, but we still want to see a high street at the end of this. But this is driven principally by consumer choices. But I say the business rate system was built for a completely different era when pretty much every part of commerce and trade was done from a premises. I think the other thing I would say about this whole discussion, when we talk about business rates reform, we talk about retail a lot. And of course, the retail, retail is particularly hard hit by some of the changes to that consumer demand. But it's not just about retail. It's also about the competition for restaurants and takeaways, often are the dark kitchens of Deliveroo, again, which have a different business rate makeup, a different proportion of turnover uh, that are, um, uh, are basically driven from business rates. And the same in my own. Uh, business, estate agents and lettings business, we have competition that's trading online increasingly and, and uh, plenty of other sectors as well, not least the travel sector. So I don't think we can look at this purely in the context of retail. I think the, uh, I welcome the fact the opposition has brought forward this debate and has made some suggestions about how we reform, so we need to look at some suggestions. The Treasury has, of course, suggested uh, in its consultation a, th a couple of different things we would look at. Uh, a land value tax, which it pretty much discounts. It also looks at VAT, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, it seems to centre the consultation around an online sales tax. I personally think that is a problem. It will just further complicate an already very complex tax system. And the one thing, the trouble with an online sales tax, is a very crude measure. Because it, on the face of it, it wants to have input and output, which VAT does, which deals with the different profitability margins that businesses operate on. So it's, it's, I'm not sure it could even work. Um, I think, for me, when you look at an online sales tax, we already have a sales tax in this country, which is VAT. It, makes, it would be far simpler to use VAT as the mechanism for this. In terms of the opposition's suggestion in terms of, uh, in terms of lifting the threshold for paying business rates for a temporary period of time and then uh, increasing digital services tax by six-fold, that can only be a very temporary solution because digital services tax has to be, has to be uh, uh, eradicated, has to be taken away when we introduce the multinational agreement on corporation tax. So it only can be a very temporary measure, of course, the other thing that, of course, Amazon did when we brought in the digital services tax, which this, this government brought in to try and level this playing field, Amazon added it straight onto prices, straight onto to prices of consumers. Um, and the, the Honourable Lady may well know, and the front bench, front bench Shadow Minister may know, that the digital services tax, because the way it had to be drafted, does not even apply to Amazon's direct sales only applies to the marketplace activity, so third-party sellers. So she's not even hitting Amazon's, uh, in that proposal, Amazon's direct sales on that using a digital services tax. So for all those reasons, I think that's the wrong thing to do. I do think it's the right thing to look at this completely freshly again. And um, I don't think property tax is a solution in terms of how we replace that 30 
billion pounds of revenue. Like my friend for Bexhill and Battle, I thought he was very clear in his comments, and probably maybe others didn't quite uh, see it that way, but very clear in his comments. To me, the simple way to deal with this is to add about three pence to VAT, so increase VAT from 20 pence to 23 pence. That would, that would, on the face of it, increase um, the, uh, the take in terms of uh, VAT to about 20 billion a year, which gets you pr quite a long way down the line in terms of increasing, increasing that revenue, replacing business rate for revenue. It's simple, it's easy. As a retailer, if we had online sales tax, John Lewis, for example, have three channels. It's not, it's not just high street or online, it's also click and collect. What, an online sales tax, John Lewis or anybody else would have to decide how that product is sold and apply a different an online sales tax just to the products that were sold online or, or click and collect, however we draft the legislation. It would be hugely complex, yeah. where VAT is just so brutally simple. Everybody pays the same rates. Everybody is up there on a fair and level playing field. It is simple, it is quick, it is easy. Um, it, well, it's, it's not easy. I, none of this conversation is easy, but it is simple. Simple and easy being two different things. The final thing we should look at in this conversation, which would be far more controversial, would be the threshold of VAT, which sits around £85,000, I think, at the moment, in terms of businesses don't pay, don't have to be registered for VAT, £85,000. I think we should look at that again. I think we should look at reducing it significantly. That level in other countries, Germany, for example, is £20,000. The £85,000 threshold is a real disincentive for businesses to grow. Lots of businesses stay under that threshold because they don't want to register for VAT because of the cost of it, uh, the cost to that business. It really distorts the marketplace. We should have a full review of how VAT operates, both in terms of its level, in terms of to, re and to replace business rates with it, but also look at the threshold because that would be overnight, that would take away one of the major blockages to productivity in our economy, which stops businesses recruiting extra people, taking extra premises, opening longer. Many businesses actually close a certain proportion of the year to try and stay under that threshold. That fair and level playing field needs to happen right across the economy. Keep it simple, keep it stable. That's what businesses want. I really hope the Minister on Duty and the Treasury Ministers, I hope we're listening to this as well, look at this and, uh, and take a more kind of a, a broader view about how we get our property taxes right, our business taxes right. Thank you. Yeah. Emma Hardy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it's a pleasure, as always, to follow the thoughtful contribution 